Happy Monday, print fam. Welcome back to the print shop. My name's Darren, and we're already printing today. I got distracted this morning because I got the YouTube video or the vlog set up and scheduled. It was 15 minutes late, so my apologies. But I was busy answering comments that I forgot to film the HP Latex printing. Luckily, we have a lot more to print. I'm filming the cutting right now of this job. So we'll film the printing of the next one and we'll get it weeded and taped and then Bob will be over and I'm not sure what else we're doing. So welcome back. Thanks for being here. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and let's get going with the day. things pads and I'm missing my brush so I gotta go find one but these are just a hundred eight and a half by 11s with black print so I don't even cut them I don't do 11 by 17 to save a click I just print them eight and a half by 11 single-sided I do them in sets of 100 so the printer sorts them so I don't have to think that they're different sizes. Not that that would matter because as long as they're getting the quantity they paid for, it doesn't matter if one book has like a few more, but it just makes it easier for me. It takes out some of the finishing, which takes out time, which saves money. So I have this little cheap pad station from Martin Yale. It's not my most favorite thing in the world, just because I don't feel that the clamping pressure can get as nice as I want it to be, but it does at least do the job, and that's what matters. Because right now, I'm trying to do everything I can to save money and not spend it. So, the way that this particular one works is it's got this that comes off and you get all the paper aligned up here. And this guy in here. I do want to get some scratch paper. I found if I don't put paper on top, then the glue tends to ruin the first few pages, so. So I just have a little nuts to twist here, and then they relock, and then inside they have these ones but then allow you to clamp even more the reason i don't like it is because these slip so i will find the brush and we'll go from there all right so i have a foam brush this is not the ideal type of brush for this but it's what i got i just made a mess of the jar 
So I usually mix the top up a little bit because I don't use this very often. And I coat liberally. I do always try to go from the center out. And I tried to never paint this way to get the edge. Because then it makes it harder when you're tearing. Alright, my fam. Ran some errands, made some deliveries, went to the post office. Gotta send an invoice off to my customer. It is 3.30, the family is going to the water park, so I'm gonna go with them, trying to slow down a little bit and spend some time with the family. So I'm gonna go do that. I'm gonna come back and work a little bit more, so I will work late, but that's because I worked with, or spent some time with the family. Um, quoted out some t-shirt orders tonight when we get back we've got to do a bunch of artwork so I'm behind on artwork and need to do that and this is stuff that I just it's not worth sending to Penji it's laying out some text only wedding announcements and um, a few other just modifications to artwork so that's what we'll be doing as soon as I get back which for you will be seconds or there might be a time lapse, depending on what Cam decides to do. All right, print fam, I'm back from sewing. It's actually 1.10, so I've been out working for a little bit, trying to get a few things done. I got a wedding announcement design sent off to the customer, got a screen printed order sent off to the vendor, the shirts order, got another screen printed job modified, sent that to the customer to see what they thought. Um, that one has to be finalized tomorrow to get done in time so good progress tonight with design stuff I still have a few things to do oh I did a third screen printed order um, and then I set up a fourth one with Penji because I don't want to design it and that one that one has time um, but before we call it a night I wanted to go over some of the questions that I've gotten recently that I thought might be helpful for more people that might not necessarily look in the comments. Um, so Uber Uber asked, um, how do you market and get your business? I find it hard to get consistent business because of the tons of competition. Um, so a, I wouldn't say a good chunk, but I do get quite a bit of business from BNI. Um, so if we're looking just at my current orders, uh, for printing in-house, I've got a business card order and that will likely turn into some shirts and some decals after the business cards are done. That one's from BNI. Um, no embroidery right now from BNI. I do have a promotional product for a pill bottle from BNI. Um, a screen printed order is from BNI. no heat transfers uh, large format order so I have some trailer decals that I'm doing that's from BNI so yeah almost every category of job that I do has a job from BNI oh no not a yawn it's one o'clock it's justified <laughs> um so B&I is a great place. Uh, I also do a lot from just word of mouth. That's probably my biggest re referral source. Um, but kind of one thing, and I've mentioned this before, one thing that kind of Bob and I do different, and part of that is just because I've been doing this for over 10 years now, is I have a lot of repeat orders from customers. And as long as you treat those customers right then um they'll come back um one of my favorite customers they just call me every few months and say i need more business cards 
They use them as appointment cards. I made the artwork 10 years ago. The only thing I changed is they added a second location and occasionally they'll order them for that location, but usually it's just their primary location and that one I've never touched. So I do a lot of smaller jobs and Bob tends to do a lot of bigger jobs and that's good and bad for both of us. Um, but right now, like if I look at our sales queue, I have 29 jobs in the queue and Robert has 11, but a lot of, well, not a lot, but a good chunk of my jobs are less than a hundred bucks because I just do little jobs. Um, so yeah, that was one question that I wanted to go over. Um, probably some tips that I would give you is make sure you have a Facebook page, make sure you have an Instagram page. Make sure you tell your friends and your family because like we went and visited my grandpa's grave on Memorial Day and my cousin was there and he was like, oh, don't you do printing? Yeah, I do printing. Oh, I've, been, I've just been going to Office Max. Do you do like that kind of printing? Like business cards and flyers and whatnot? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> He's like, oh, I had no idea. Um, and one of my biggest customers, um, right now anyway, they only thought I did stickers. And the first job that I got from them, I, I knew they ordered a lot because they have signs in their store, they do shirts, they do promotions. I gave them the first batch of stickers. It wasn't very many, it was probably five, ten dollars worth of stickers. And I gave them to them and said, hey, I do all sorts of things. Basically, if you want your name on it, I can do it. I can do your shirts and your company stuff and this, that, the other. I'd love the opportunity to bid on those. I'm sorry that I keep yawning. That turned in last year, they were a $20,000 customer. This year, I don't know where they'll be, but they're probably on track to do that. So just open your mouth. Um, another common one I get is, do I still like my eye color? Absolutely. I made some stuff on Saturday that I didn't film because again, kids were in and out and all over the place and use the white toner because they're super, they're super small. So this is, I think one and a quarter inches by one and three quarter inches. And this is just the white toner. I applied it to the cap. They turned out great. So yes, I still use the eye color. Still love the eye color. We even did a shirt for Bob for Father's Day. Gave it to his father-in-law. Um, I know there are a couple other questions. Let me find them. Uh, the other common question that I've been getting lately is how do I quote stuff? And a lot of that comes back to the Excel spreadsheet that I put together that determines my cost of things. So what I did was I determine what the machine costs and everything associated with running the machine, put that into an Excel spreadsheet so that I could determine what the true cost is. Because like on the HP Latex, if I just account for media and ink, that doesn't cover the replacement of this machine, it doesn't cover the payment of the machine, it doesn't cover power for the machine. And so I used this spreadsheet. That was nothing. I used this spreadsheet to determine all of those factors to give me my real cost per square foot. I did the same thing with the Konica where it's like, okay, here's the cost of the Konica, here's the average lifespan of the Konica, here's my click cost of the Konica, so I could do all of these numbers to determine what, like, the real click cost, the real click cost was, what the real per square foot cost was, and the real per sheet of the white toner, so that I could be safe. And that's how I determine the click cost and the square foot cost, and I have a It's getting really late. 
that yawn count is just ting, 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 ting. <laughs> um, I've got a list in monday.com for common papers so that Bob can quickly quote something. That way he doesn't have to call me all the time. For HP, we primarily do the HP Prime Gloss and we've just set a price for that that he knows that's also listed in monday.com. For promotional products, um, they give us a price and we typically follow it. Sometimes we discount it. Um, for screen printing, I have an Excel spreadsheet that I made that, ooh, that lets you fill in um, all of the specialty things. So like I get charged if there's a zipper, if it's long sleeve, it's a special location if I want to bag it. I get charged screens, I get charged the run charge. Um, we can then add in like a delivery, a margin, a design fee. So that way we can put in all of the shirts. Um, so in this case, like when I order shirts, shirts don't all cost the same price. And so you have kind of extra small to extra large, which tend to always be the same price. And then 2X is a different price, 3X, 4X, 5X, etc., depending on what shirt, what brand, etc. So I have a place where I can put in all the shirt sizes and I have a place to put in all my costs on those shirt sizes so it will calculate based off of what shirts they want, what the price will be. So that way I can determine, okay, what is this gonna cost me versus what I'm gonna sell it for. And I have all of the prices and everything put in so that we can easily, we can put in what it costs, we can put in what our, our what I've determined is our retail rate so that we can quickly, and it calculates the total, it divides it by the number of shirts, so that rather than saying, oh, well, for the small through extra large, it's this, and for this, it's that. So that way, if they do add a shirt, there's enough kind of margin in, like say they wanted two 4X and two 2X and like five smalls, then there's enough margin in the cost difference that if they add a 2X, the price per shirt that we quoted should cover that. Um, and then it covers, it calculates basically the profit, the commission that the company gets and the commission that the salesperson gets. Um, from there, we typically drop ship directly from the supplier to the screen printer, and then we just pick up the order when it's done. Um, and then I also have an Excel spreadsheet put together for heat transfer vinyl, which is that stuff. Um, and I just charge per square inch. I found someone else's online, did some math, and liked it. So that's what I use. So, yeah. That's how I calculate my prices. Sometimes it's too low. Sometimes it's too high. Most of the time, my customers don't complain. So I'm too low. All right, print fam, it's officially time to call it a night. It's almost two o'clock club, two o'clock club. So happy two o'clock club. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. If you have any questions about what I do, why I do it, how I do it, etc., leave those questions down in the comments. Thank you, Cam, for editing the video. Really appreciate you. If you guys want to support the channel, you can do so with the links down in the description. Amazon Affiliate, Patreon, all the other stuff that's down there. Cam's Podcast, you name it. Anyway, for tomorrow, I've got a bunch of hats that I need to get done. I think it's 35 in total. They're all embroidered. 
So we're gonna get Bach out. We got 15 for one company, 20 for another. Uh, they're all just single color white. Uh, 15, no, 20 of them are puff, which I hate puff, but we're gonna we're gonna do it anyway. Uh, so we got puff, and then we got non-puff. The non-puffs are only like 4,000 stitches, so those shouldn't be too terrible. Uh, we also got some HP LaTeX stuff. I know Bob's got some stuff that's due Wednesday, and I had a customer that they forgot one name for a set that we did. So I'm gonna try and hopefully see if Bob's stuff is ready so that we can just do it all at once because the name is literally like that big and I don't wanna print just that. So hopefully Bob's stuff is ready because he's got like a three foot by one foot, a four foot by 13 inches, an eight foot by 24 inches. So he's got a good mix of stuff that I could pop a single name in there. So hopefully we can get that done and we'll see what else we're gonna do. But so far, tomorrow is finish up a couple of screen printed shirt orders. I'll talk about why I currently don't screen print myself besides just lack of space. And we're gonna get those embroideries done. So thank you for being here. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for liking. And we'll see you in tomorrow's vlog prefer. Bye. Huge shout out to our patrons over at patreon.com forward slash TTMS.